Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, and today I want to talk about Shungite. Many, many people have been asking me about Shungite for EMF protection, uh, especially after I did my video on the Q-Link, and so I figured I better actually look into this stuff. So, okay, Shungite, you know, people have uh, a, a nice pyramid like this guy. Uh, as you can see, Shungite is sort of a black uh, mineraloid type, mineral-like substance. Uh, you can get it in different shapes. There's a cylinder, there's these lovely little pendants that I'll show you in a minute. In any case, people have shungite, you know, you wear it around your neck and they say that it protects them from EMF. So what you do is you hop on the internet, of course, and you search and you find out that uh, there are like, probably like 50,000 websites and they all say exactly the same thing. They say that shungite is, uh, it has fullerenes in it, and it absorbs EMF. Uh, you can go on YouTube and there's a video of a woman. She has an EMF meter like this one and she holds it up against a microwave oven, puts a little tiny piece of shungite in between the meter and the microwave oven and she, you can see the reading on the meter. It drops when the shungite is between the microwave oven and the EMF meter. And so from this you might conclude that shungite does indeed absorb EMF. Okay, so first of all uh, it gets complicated because Shungite comes originally from the Shunga, Shunga village in the Karelia, the Republic of Karelia, which is in the northwest of uh, Russia, I think. So originally Shungite meant a mineraloid, a mineral-like substance uh, that was uh, at least 98% carbon. Now at some point that kind of changed because now when we talk about Shungite, what we're actually talking about is the stuff that you can buy on Amazon and everywhere else. And it's not actually this more pure shungite that's 98% carbon. It's actually uh, sort of like a rock with shungite in it. And of course we know this because real shungite is at least 98% carbon. And the shungite that you can buy on places like Amazon, it will tell you, oh, there's type 1, type 2, type 3, type 5, blah, blah, blah. And they'll say, well, this shungite is uh, between 30 and 80% carbon. Now, it gets even hairier because shungite is supposed to contain something called fullerenes. Now, fullerenes are basically just a bunch of carbon atoms that are sort of arranged together with bonds between the carbon atoms. Uh, it can look like these structures. You can have sort of like a some kind of like quasi-spherical structure. You can have tubes like carbon nanotubes, for example. Um, you can have even bigger spheres like this one. And so the point is you have these carbon atoms and they arrange themselves in three-dimensional geometric structures. Um, now, just because something has fullerenes doesn't mean it's magical because fullerenes vary. Depending on the fullerene that you're talking about, it can either be an insulator, it can be a conductor, and some fullerenes are even superconductors. Now, as I said, if you go on the internet and you read about shungite, everyone talks about how it contains fullerenes. But even real shungite, the 98% carbon stuff, apparently contains less than 0.001% of fullerenes. So right off the bat we have some confusion because if everyone's claiming that the shungite stuff is absorbing EMFs because it has fullerenes in it, that's apparently not really true because the amount of fullerenes in this chunk of shungite here is like super, super teeny tiny. Uh, what's more, I was unable to find any information at all that fullerenes of any type, remember there are different types of fullerenes, I was unable to find any information that fullerenes have some sort of magical property where they just absorb EMF. Uh, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but I couldn't find anything. Uh, okay, so the shungite that we buy on Amazon is not pure shungite, it's sort of like a rock with shungite in it. One of the reasons for that is apparently the real 98% carbon shungite is kind of crumbly or something, or it's hard to machine. So of course the stuff that you buy that's shaped like this is not going to be the more pure stuff. In any case, Whatever this stuff is, everybody says, well, I buy it and I bought it because everyone claims that it absorbs EMFs, so it protects me. So I thought, well, I saw this video of this woman, you know, holding the piece of shungite between her EMF meter and the microwave, and indeed the value of the, the, the RF energy coming from the microwave, it dropped. So I thought, well, let me do my own experiment. Okay, so I've got various types of shungite here, and I also have my, my Cornet, uh, ED88T plus 
electro smog meter. It measures uh, up to eight gigahertz. So I'm gonna use that as my EMF meter. I've got my various bits of shungite here. And of course I have my, my TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi router. Uh, now the idea here is that uh, this is kind of hard to film in order to be able to see the, the, the actual EMF meter reading. What I'm actually gonna do is kind of do this vertically. The idea here is that I'll go, what I'm actually going to do is go like this and then move the shungite in and out, but I'm going to do it vertically so you can actually read the meter. So first of all, let's turn on the Wi-Fi. You can see that's uh, highly reflective. We're getting our little blinking lights. There we go, okay, he's firing up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this right here and obviously this antenna is radiating horizontal, uh, uh, it's, the antenna is horizontal so it's radiating like this and when you use an EMF meter you generally you want to use it so that the meter is, is parallel to the antenna. So I'm going to turn the meter on. Alright so now, now we're going and as you can see I have a, a reading there of about 38, I move it closer and it gets to, you know, 126 milliwatts per square meter. Um, I should note that this Wi-Fi router here, this, uh, the power level setting on here is actually set to low. I have another video about that. Um, I'll link to that in the description. But in any case, you can see we're in the red here. Now we're about this far away from the antenna. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass this lovely little shungite pendant in between the meter and the antenna and we'll see if the number goes down. Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. It keeps, seems to be going sort of up and down. Th that doesn't seem to do anything. It's kind of bouncing between, you know, 36 and down to 20 something. And so let's pass this one in here. Well, again, he's not really doing anything. So how about how about this big honking pyramid? I mean, if anything works, that will, right? So let's pass the big honking pyramid in there. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. That's a drop down to seven. If I remove it, it goes back up to 32. You can see the, the red light goes away. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. And now we try our cylinder. And again, it drops down to about seven. I move it away, it goes back up to 40, 17. It's bouncing all over the place because Wi-Fi signals are not constant. So there it goes up really high. I put it in, it drops super low. Okay, so I just repeated the experiment, this time with a Wi-Fi router, and indeed it seems that the uh, something is going on with the Shungite. But can we actually say that the Shungite is absorbing the EMF? Uh, is it absorbing it or is it blocking or reflecting it? So we can do another quick little experiment because if there's any shungite in the general vicinity of the antenna, it will absorb the radiation and the EMF meter should drop. The reading should go down, right? So let's give that a whirl. So we'll move everything way out of the way here just so we don't skew the results. And you can see it's, it's really going good now. So again, if I put it in between the antenna, it drops way down. But if I move it out here, it's still really high. If I move it up here, if I move it down here next to the antenna, it actually goes up higher. Then I pull it away and it drops back down. So if, if I've got my meter here and I move this close to the antenna, sometimes it jumps, it, it does all kinds of weird stuff. But the only way I can actually get it to go down is to put it directly between the Wi-Fi antenna and the EMF meter. So the general, just having a piece of shungite here is obviously not absorbing EMF, it's simply blocking it. Now this is where it gets interesting, because then I thought, well, is this stuff actually conductive? Is shungite just conductive, and would a simple piece of metal work? So then I tried that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my meter here, so you can see that, and I'm just going to measure about an inch apart and what do I get for a resistance reading? Oh, it's, well, it, it varies, but maybe three ohms or so. Okay, so 
this is highly conductive. Well, here I have a piece of steel. It's just a nice thick piece of steel. So obviously that's that's obviously very conductive. So then this gave me the idea of just trying with the piece of steel. So here's the meter. The meter is reading 50, 60. So let me just take this piece of steel and put it in the way. Oh look, it dropped. And I move it away and it comes back. I use the piece of shungite. The value drops, I move it away, it shoots back up. So here we have a problem because what appears to be happening is if I have this EMF meter and it's near the Wi-Fi antenna and I put a piece of shungite in between, it's not actually absorbing necessarily. Uh, this is a piece of conductive material and all conductive materials will sometimes absorb and re-radiate the, the radio waves, in this case the Wi-Fi waves. Uh, in some cases it will, uh, some waves will pass and it will actually reflect the waves back. So if I can get similar results with this piece of shungite and this piece of steel, then we can't say that this is actually absorbing EMF. Furthermore, I just demonstrated that when, I'm, when I've got my meter here and I've got the piece of shungite anywhere near it, it obviously isn't absorbing anything because I have to put it directly between the EMF meter and the antenna. So basically what that means is that Shungite is not actually absorbing EMFs. At least based on my quick and dirty test here, uh, there is nothing particularly magical about Shungite in terms of absorbing EMF. Now, having said that, um, you may recall that I did a video up here on the Q-Link. You may also notice that I'm still wearing my Q-Link. Now in that video, um, I talked about the Q-Link, I talked about a doctor friend of mine and, you know, the reason why I decided to test it and the end result was, yikes, it, it seems to actually do something, it seems to actually help me. But there are teardown videos of the Q-Link and inside the Q-Link there's some little crystal-like looking things and this quasi-circuit board looking thing and then just a coil of copper wire around it. In terms of the, uh, in terms of electronics, electrical circuits, uh, I have no idea how the Q-Link might work, and of course the people who make them are not saying what it is that apparently makes them work, assuming that they work at all. Except my personal experience with the Q-Link is that yes, I actually see a difference. So the point of this video is not to say don't use Shungite. The point is to say that all of the information that's out there about Shungite, that it absorbs EMFs, that it's loaded with fullerenes, most of that information is apparently dead wrong. Uh, that doesn't mean that shungite doesn't work. I know people who, you know, they had arthritis in their wrists and their hands and they, they absolutely swore by copper bracelets. They'd say, I, you know, I put that copper bracelet on and the, the pain would go away, my fingers were more flexible, blah, blah, blah. Now, should I walk in there and say, well, there's no scientific evidence that wearing copper bracelets fixes the, you should take a drug instead. You know, even if the, the, the effects of these things are because we believe they work, even if the effect is basically mind over body, why on earth would I tell that person, that's not scientific, stop wearing your copper bracelet? If it works, use it. Um, how is that a bad thing? So I'm a little bit dismayed actually because uh, I was kind of expecting to see something really interesting in terms of shungite absorbing EMF. And as I just showed, um, it doesn't seem to be absorbing anything. It seems to be reflecting or blocking, just like any conductive piece of metal would. And furthermore, everyone talks about shungite having fullerenes in them, and the actual quantity in real shungite is like so infinitesimally small that in the shungite that we buy from, say, Amazon, uh, it's going to be even lower. So basically, there's a lot of bunk out there about shungite, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if you have... Uh, you know, like a pendant like this one, and you're wearing it around your neck, uh, you should stop using it. Because as I said in my Q-Link video, you know, if you use something and it works for you, then get down with your bad self. Um, there is a lot that we don't understand about pretty much everything, including simple things like gravity. 
So, um, I, in fact, I read an article not so long ago that um, there was a, a new organ that was discovered. It was a part of the body that they thought wasn't, it didn't serve any purpose. And they went, oh yeah, actually we think that might be kind of important. Um, you know, there are things that we're even discovering about water for crying out loud. So I'm one of those people who goes like, right. I just kind of debunked the, you know, the 50,000 websites out there. But at the same time, um, I'm not going to totally poo-poo it because there are things that, that I don't know and that I don't understand. And as I said with the copper bracelet story, if you use something and it works, why would you not use it? That just doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, if mind over body works and that's all it is, awesome. Go for it. So that's the story on Shungite. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.